Hey, what's up everybody? We're going to be setting up the ultimate VirtualBox test lab so we can have a foundation to go off of um, when we're teaching ourselves how to install servers, how to troubleshoot servers and server related issues, um, practice uh, installing a couple domain controllers, having one go down, pretending that it broke, um, and doing some disaster recovery, setting up SQL servers, um, WSUS, um, Exchange server. We are going to be getting to that. I know I said I was going to be doing that a while back, but um, as you can see, I'm in the middle of remodeling this home, and we just decided to sell it uh, and buy a different home. So now we're really rushing to get this thing done. So this video here is just going to be kind of an intro on setting up this whole environment. Over the years, I've tried different virtual environments. I've tried uh, VirtualBox. I've tried VMware Workstation, VMware ESXi, Zen Server. Um, I'm sure there's another one I missed in there, but for what we're going to do here in this tutorial, in this article, is we're going to set up VirtualBox. I like VMware Workstation. I tried it here on this MacBook. I just don't want to pay that much money, at least not right now. VirtualBox does the same thing. Um, it's a little bit more manual process for some of the things we're going to be doing here, uh, setting it up in a future video, but it's free. There's lots of documentation. There's a lot of command line options you can do to to make this stuff work so uh, it's really not that hard there's gonna be a lot of steps involved with the setting it up the way we want to set it up but let me give you a, a brief description of what we're gonna be doing I just learned about this um, I've seen it before setting up virtual machines I just never really dove into it farther we're gonna be using linked clones to set up a bunch of different virtual machines while not needing that much hard drive space now here's kinda of how it works we're gonna have my host machine, which is my big computer in my office, which I use mainly for video editing. Now that I got this thing, I kind of just sit on this thing all day long. But that machine out there is actually, uh, it's, a, it's a nice i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM. I got two SSDs in there and a, H, a regular standard hard drive in there. Um, it, it's got an old video card, but it still works. And uh, there's plenty of power on that machine, so I figured, you know what, I'll just set it up on that with VirtualBox. And the problem I, I was having is when I install a server, it was taking up you know 15 gigs, 16 gigs, just on the base install, not including any software, uh, server applications, or anything like that. And then by the time I'm done, there was like 25 gigs taken and whatnot. And then I wanted to set up another one. That's another 25 gigs, and then another one, and another 25. And same thing with Windows 8 and different software and stuff. And it just it's too much hard drive space. So these link clones, what it does, it's really cool. You put you, you, you create a base OS or a base image and after creating that base image installing all the the updates um, doing a couple other little things we clean up the drive so we actually shrink that down a little bit I've been getting my Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8 machines down to about 13 14 gigabytes maybe 15 I don't remember but that's the base image for the Windows Server 2012 Okay, so then what we do is we sysprep that and shut it off and we don't turn it back on. Then we right click that, do a link clone, and then we set up another Windows Server 2012. And what it does is it uses that base image as its base OS. And then any changes made, if you add you know a server role to it, it's saved in its own VDI in its own folder. So, and that's really small. I mean, depending on what you're putting on it, it's going to stay really small. You don't have to have that extra 15 gigabytes of storage space just for that second VM. And then you can just do that. You just do two, three, four linked clones, and it's only going to be taking up maybe a couple, few gigs per extra VDI that, or extra VM that you're going to be installing. So that's huge for me. And then also, a side note with that, I'm putting these on an SSD because it has fast read access to, to that base OS. Um, and the link clones I'm also putting on the SSD. So that way it's really fast because we're going to be accessing multiple link clones at the same time. So um, the tests that I've done so far, it's running great. I have no problems. So in the next video in this series, um, we will be actually doing a step-by-step -step installation of this. I don't know if I'm going to split it up into different parts because there is a lot of information on setting these up. Um, and then also I'm including the PF Sense install. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail than I did in the previous series on the setting up a virtual network uh, or virtual lab networking section. But this is going to have a little bit more detail. 
uh, it, it should get you up and going really quick. And um, just stay tuned because I am in the process of remodeling this house still. And I got a lot of work and I'm kind of on a time crunch. So the the first video in the series may take a little bit of time, but uh, hang in there if you're interested in it. And um, other than that, so stay tuned and uh, see you guys around.